Hi, and welcome back for your daily dose of LOL Esports content, where we're going to cover the games that took place this morning in the LCK and LPL, and preview tomorrow's matchups in both series. Predictions, I went 3-1 and one on the day, 36-20 and 20 on the season thus far. Um, a lot of interesting new names that we didn't expect to see starting. Um, Zhao Yuji for IG started in place of An, and Bull was brought up in place of Taeyun for the Kwangdong Freaks. So that's some stuff we'll talk about. So first is Nip versus LGD in the LPL. Pretty expected 2-0 here. Um, now, in the manner in which it came about was interesting. Photic, 16-4-12, 34% of damage. Aki was MVP, 5-2-26 in the jungle. Kepler, 2-9-9, 36% of damage in the loss. So, game one, very close. Actually, all four of LPL games, laning phase, a lot closer than it should have been. Given that Nip and IG were heavy favorites, LGD and Up actually performed quite well. Uh, laning phase of game one was 15 minutes, and the biggest diffies occurred in mid and um, bot lane. Rookie ahead 15 over Haichau in an Azir versus Yone matchup, which would then be mirrored on the other side in game two. And Kepler Jin Zhao were ahead of Photic Shu 22 CS. In terms of the laning phase, though, it was determined by Aki. Aki was all over the place, um, trying to see on the rel. And um, Rookie Zazir would come through in the mid game. So first things first, though, that, that uh, rel for Aki, he made a lot of things happen. Nip went mid lane three times. LGD went mid lane a couple times. Mid lane prio was huge. But Nip were able to secure all the objectives, taking... Both Grub spawns as well as Rip Terald and the Drake. Um, even took a trip bot lane despite getting um, behind in gold. And because the game was so close though, we saw key team fights where Rookie performed well on the Azir, getting some shuffles out. LGD would respond in this one. Hai Chow on Yone was a big difference maker. I thought this, honestly, I said in the Discord when I was watching it. Um, because I watched it after I got up, of course, woke up and, and things of that nature. Um, that was the best game I've seen out of Hai Chow in his career so far, and he's probably played 50 games. Um, I thought that he and Kepler at times were able to stave off, um, Nip. It was a tough end for Nip, and I did say this yesterday, at least in my predictions video, I don't remember if I said it in my daily dose, that we have to keep in mind that it was Nip's first series, and they could come out flat, they could come out rusty, that's what's going to happen in the LPL and any region when these teams come off of a couple month layoff off of stage. So, Nip definitely had issues trying to end, and you got to also keep in mind there are players that haven't played together, Shanji Aki with Rookie, and Fodic. Um, obviously, Rookie's played with Fodic before, but Shanji Aki have not, and then you have Shu in, in the support role. Um, so, you know, the game's got to transpire a certain way, right? So, game two was very close as well, tied in gold around the 14-minute mark. Uh, LGD and Meteor on Kindred really set the tone in this one, getting ahead early. Um, in the top side, 27 CS over Aki, and um, Bird, Bird Owl was actually at 23 over um, Shanji. Now, something to, to, to kind of go over, though, is Shanji's Kesante made a big difference. It was reminiscent of yesterday with Harry that LGD tried to go top side and actually lost a 2v2. It ended up being a 2v2, 2-0. Uh, and that gave Kesante and Maokai for Shanji and Aki an advantage. And because Aki was so impactful in game one, I ended up making him MVP because in game two, he was around everywhere, right? On a Maokai, having well-timed alties and things of that nature. Um, also, I have Fodic here, his Lucian. That was very aggressive. Um, finding plays. Uh, something that really helped them secure a couple drakes on the bot side of the rift. Um, the teams did trade grubs. There was a lot of action in the bot side. The teams took three trips in the first 14 minutes combined. But Fodic and Shu were the were the powerful two. And even in team fights as the game went along, you could see Fodic with that aggression stepping forward on the Lucian and dealing damage. So it's ironic, honestly, because Kepler was playing Senna both games, and that's Fodic's best champion. Fodic, and I say it anytime I talk about Senna or him, 
that is his best champion by a lot, and he has the best Senna in the world. So, Nip win 2-0. Ultra Prime IG. Uh, IG win this 2-0, and it was messy. Crying ends up being my MVP, 11, 1, and 19, 42% of damage. Wink, 4, 227 at support. Yukai, 1, 5, 4, 29% of damage in the loss. So, like I said when I started this off, all the LPL games were rather close. Um, game 1 for Ultra Prime IG, the Diffy was only 300 gold at 17 minutes. Um, in terms of CS Diff, Crying was ahead 11 over um, Yukai, Crying on a Talia. And then Ultra Prime's bot lane of Doggo uh, Jue were ahead 19. And Jue's Nautilus I thought was really good in the early game, actually securing an early kill for the bot lane of Ultra Prime. Um, act, and honestly, he also, hit, I think, hit another hook on a roam to mid lane. Um, definitely more uh, aggressive. Hacker was ahead of Tianjin by quite a bit. Tianjin on the REL, really leaving a lot to be desired. Uh, given that you're picking REL, you need to make something happen, and he really didn't um, until the laning phase was coming to an end, and we they'd already lost a couple Drakes and a couple um, Grub area, you know, like, I should actually specify on here on my board when I look. You know, I've got two grubs for Ultra Prime and one for IG, and one of those are Rift Herald. So, um, regardless, Ultra Prime secured four of those five objectives, and a lot of that had to do with Shui's Pryo and bot lane. There was a key team fight in the mid game for Cryon on Talia that gave IG the little boost they needed to then start taking objectives and start gaining control of the map. YSKM would close it out on Jax, doing very well in the final game team fights, even though he was slightly behind Decade in the laning phase. Game 2, the laning phase once again, long, 17 minutes, only 400 CS difference. Crying ahead 19 over Yukai on the Azir. And then uh, the bot lane of Doggo Jue ahead 26 over Zhao Yuji and Wink. Now, Tian Chen was a difference maker in this one on the Lee Sin, very active, diving under turret onto Ultra Prime and securing kills. Cryon's Azir actually was able to get a solo kill onto uh, Yukai, which really kind of gave me the boost to give him MVP after already doing very well in game one on the Talia, and then just was impactful through the rest of the game in team fights on the Azir, hence 42% of damage. I believe that wasn't made on the facilitator Talia in game one. Zhao Yuji on Callista really closed out some team fights, obviously, with his Rens. And Wink on the Nautilus securing, um, you know, uh, uh, hooks and, and things of that nature. Uh, the laning phase was, once again, determined by Hacker, though. He was a little more active than Tianjin, but like I said, Tianjin got that bot lane in a good position. Although they end up losing it by 26 CS, the gold was rather close so both two o's but they weren't clean and that's what's going to happen early part of the split um you know a lot of overreactions and hyperbole from the league community which is par for the course lck fear x hle hle went 2 0 peanut was my mvp zeka 13 to 13 31 per, sorry 13 to 11 31 percent of damage delight 3 1 27 Closer, 163, 36% of damage in the loss. Slow, game one. Uh, Fear X, very competitive in this one uh, in, in terms of uh, not falling behind in gold. They're able to take a couple Rift Herald, you know, Grub Area spawns to be able to get some gold. But in terms of activity, Peanut gapped Willer. He solo killed him early on on the Poppy. And then all really Fear X had was Henna on Senna. Um... He outplayed a dive by Peanut, and really Willer got nothing off in response. Peanut and HLE, I have a play to in the jungle, which was the solo. A couple plays to mid, to bot, a couple drakes, where all Fear X had were those two grub area um, spawns. Viper on Lucian, making a difference in team fights, and Zekka on the Corky as well. Um, but in my opinion, that was Peanut who really set everybody up for success. Laning phase, Doran was ahead 12. That was the biggest difference. Game two was a blowout. Um, HLE were ahead 5K gold roughly at 1530 um, and ended this game in around 21 minutes. Laning phase, they were ahead in every roll, 31 in top lane, 13 in mid, 14 in the bot side. 
Willer and Firax got one playoff in mid. Execute, I thought, looked good on the Renata in this one. I thought he looked aggressive on the Nautilus as well, even pulling out a TP Nautilus in a Senna Nautilus bot lane. Um, but it wasn't enough as Zeka and Peanut secured a 2v2 in the mid lane, if I recall. On the Tristana, that kind of set things going, very reminiscent of how I talked about the IG, um, sorry, the NIP LGD game two, in that, you know, the one team's trying to make a play and it falters and they get blown out of it 2-0 and, and the ball really starts moving. And once you give uh, Tristana some gold, uh, she starts going off. Peanut, obviously excellent in this one. I'm not really allowed to say it was a clean 2-0 when it comes to um, Jungle Gap. KT and KDF. So this is an upset. KDF win um, 2-1. Bull in his debut, 23-10 and 19, 25% of damage. Dudu, 12-4-21 in top lane. Deft, 12-12-21, 28% of damage in the loss. I definitely um, am wavering between Bull and Andal for MVP. And there's multiple reasons why. So game one, KT are ahead. About 2k gold at the end of laning phase. It was a long phase of 18 minutes before the first tower was taken. And it was clear that KDF were going to control the top side of the rift. In all three games, they had leads in CS. Whereas KT always had a lead in the bot lane. And then hell, even in mid lane in game one, they were ahead 28 CS. BDD over Bulldog. Um, and 31 for Deft Barrel into... Uh, Bull and Andal. Now you'd say to yourself, why are you making them MVP? They struggled in game one. And frankly, we're behind quite a bit in game two. And it's like, I thought Andal made plays throughout this entire series. Bull progressively got better. And in game three came through in a big way on the Callista. But I thought the, uh, that Andal throughout the entire series was pretty good. So in, on the Tom Kench in game one, he found some good plays. Did he get caught out as well? Yes. There were plays that were like, oh my God, that is Andal for you. Um... Not a lot going on in game one. Barrel on the Orn. Uh, very good in team fights, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought that he he was aggressive and had some good knockups, not even with his ulti. Pioshik on the Vi secured some good kills. But Dudu on the Rumble, laying down damage, also was very strong and made it a tough end for KT. Game two, slight gold lead for KT, pretty much tied at the end of laning phase. Dudu ahead massively over perfect 27 CS. Cuz ahead 13 over Pioshik, but 17 in favor of the bot lane of KT. Uh, Barrel on the way in game two. N another laning phase with not a lot happening. In the first 14 minutes, we had KT make a play to the jungle and mid, whereas KDF went top and mid. So not a lot of action. Andal on the Senna. I thought he looked good. So once again, Andal coming through clutch. Bulldog on the Azir. Good shuffles, good spacing. Now, sometimes he did get caught out. Uh, but at the same time, I thought he was integral to the team fights in the end. Pioshik on the Nocturne made things messy. Uh, but KDF were able to find a way to get it done. Game three definitely went to KDF. It wasn't even close. At the end of laning phase 1730, there had 3.5k gold. Uh, it was jungle mid ahead 31 CS combined over KT. Uh, the bot lane of KT ahead 12 despite dying level one. Uh, Deft on the Draven uh, dying to Bull and um, Andal. Uh, Bull on the Callista, Andal on a Renata. And Barrel actually made some plays on a Pike in this one. So interesting bot lane uh, choices by Barrel. I almost want to say it was a glorified scrim for him as he's tested some things out. Um, but the laning phase for KT and uh, Pioshik, lackluster. There was n there were no plays to note for me by Pioshik into any of these lanes in the first 17 and a half minutes. Actually, KDF made a couple plays, bot three plays to be exact, two, two, v two kills by Bull and Andal. Um, that secured a couple uh, a Drake, a couple Grub spawns. Um, they actually got a kill in the jungle. Um, and, and the reason why I debated on making bull MVP. So we played Callista in game three, played Jin in game two, and maybe Senna in game one. Um, 
Uh, maybe not Senate, because it might have been Senate or one. Regardless, regardless. Um, a Thalios game one, I think. Um, they said on the broadcast that he, pull, he uh, is not afraid to share his opinion. And that he it made it almost seem like he was a shot caller for KDF's challenger roster. And I wonder if he was the shot caller today. Because that level one play apparently was his idea. I don't know if that was because of some scouting that maybe was done or or if he just had a feel for it. And you do have to wonder if KDF, you know, they did better today because of shot calling. Maybe they wanted to make a change in that regard, which would be weird because Cuz has been around the block. But then again, was Cuz the shot caller in KT? Maybe not. It wouldn't shock me if BDD was the shot caller last year or even Lahens, who's now a shot caller for Gen G. Um, you know, I, I don't think it would be out of whack for that to be the case, right? So, uh, you know, just a, just something to think about here. You know, if Bull was the shot caller, you know, you can make an argument for making him MVP because in Game 3, he was the best player. Uh, that's without a doubt on the list. He was very aggressive, and it started off at level 1. Now, if you look at all three games, I think Andal gets it for me. Um, but, you know, it's neither here nor there. Bull had a very good debut this season. Sneak peek for tomorrow. Uh, LPL matchups, Weibo and Rare Adam. Last time they played, Weibo went 2-1. Half the players are the same. Light went 23-7-15, 37% of damage in the win. Asum, 8-9-17, 31% of damage in the loss. Thunder Talk, LNG. LNG win 2-1. Last time they played, 7 of the 10 players are the same. Um, just two things to note. Zora is starting for Rare Adam in a uh, support over Shousey. And uh, Mark is going to start over Hung for LNG in the support role. Zika Scout Gala, 32-8-50. and 50, 82% of the team's damage. Three carry rolls there. Hoya UCAL 1XN, 18-17-23. 79% damage in the loss. LCK, Nongshim, 1-1, one one, coming off of a loss to Gen G. D plus 1-1, one one, coming off of a loss to KT. Last time these teams played, D plus would win 2-0. Only half the players are the same. Showmaker, 8-7, 14, 26% of damage in the win. Gen G and Breon, Gen G 2-0, coming off of that win against Nongshim. Breon, 0-2, coming off of a loss to Fear X. Last time they played to end of last season, Breon would 2-0 Gen G. Um, how many players are the same? Half. Karras, 9-0-11, 26% of damage in the win. Chovy, 6-6-6, 31% of damage in the loss. So tomorrow we got, you know, some matchups. I guess this one's probably the one that's most competitive. I mean, unless you base Rare Adam's success in Demacia Cup as something to hang your hat on. Um... You know, Weibo do have an interesting new top side, so that may cause some interesting uh, decisions. However, you know, that is what it is. So, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. And hope to see you again tomorrow.